Hey YouTube, I decided to make this video after I've seen this picture from Benji and also watched this video here on how to customize your Adidas Tubular X into a poor man's Yeezy as they say. Uh, it's not just about uncaging the Tubular X but also making the holes and adding the row places so that it looks way I think cooler and um, nicer. So I'm going to show you all the tools you're going to need in the process to make it into this one. The reason I decided to change was not just that I thought it looked cool. Um, as you can see now, the on foot, I decided to make it because when it's caged, the laces look strange, you know, especially when you tie them tight, you know, the parts above, as you can see, look way, you know, tighter and closer to each other than they should. And I think that the version without the cage looks better and more proportional and also because um, because the sole is not made of um, boost as you can see there is a slight difference in weight you know when you remove the cage which helps when you walk so that the shoe doesn't feel as heavy in the heel base so here we go now I'm gonna cut to the process um, all the tools I'm gonna add the links um, in the about section so that you can buy the tools needed for your customization and I hope you find this helpful. So here's everything you're gonna need. For the cage you're gonna need a pair of scissors and a seam ripper uh, or a stitch remover. Then to cut the cage out you're gonna need an exacto knife make sure it's new and sharp and this is something you're gonna put in between the cage and the prime knit to make sure you don't cut part of your shoe and ruin it. Then you're gonna need a ruler or any sort of uh, measurement tool to make sure you make the holes on the right place. Use something that you can easily clean afterwards to make uh, the marks of the hole. And the soldering iron, just to make sure you cut the prime meat and seal it without leaving any sort of brim or stitches uh, around the hole. So the first thing to do, which is probably the easiest thing to do, is to just cut part of the cage and now you don't need the scissors anymore and you take the seam ripper and the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna start inside First part done, then the second part is much similar.
make sure you remove the stitches all the way to the end because you're gonna cut it off afterwards you're gonna see that there is because of the prime knit there is no trace of the old um, of the stitches when you remove them which is great Always make sure you're not cutting inside the prime knit. Once you remove the first ones, super easy to remove the rest, so don't worry too much about it. Now you can see that the cage is fully free. You should be able to, to see that, you know, the edge of the shoe inside on both sides. And now the slightly harder part begins. So, like I said, uh, you should find something that it's uh, hard enough for the exacto knife not to go through. Um, but also thin enough that you can put between the prime knit and your uh, cage. The one thing that is important when you're cutting the cage is try not to go straight or like this to avoid cutting bits of the cage, but also because afterwards you don't want a part of the suede to be seen. So just whenever you're cutting, make sure that you're going in a position more or less vertical in relation to the shoe and I'll show you just uh, how to do it now.
So as you can see, it's uh, first half of the cage is gone. And even if you don't glue uh, the inside of the shoe, uh, especially on the outer side, you shouldn't be able to see any suede if you cut it uh, the way I said it. Because the shoe is um, very, the side is quite tight to the edge. So just make sure you don't have any extra bit of suede and you should be fine.
So once the cage is off, <coughs> make sure that there is uh, no evidence of the suede left here on the side. You can probably use uh, a file or a bit of sandpaper if you want to make sure that the edges are super um, clean. But overall, uh, small details you can always remove afterwards. Like you see that there is space between the shoe and the edge. So if you wouldn't need to do a minor um, correction here. Now there is nothing left. Perfect. And you have the shoe fully uncaged. Some people might choose to wear it like this, uh, but my foot's kind of uh, big, so I would rather use it with the laces so it doesn't, you know, have this sort of loose bumping motion when I walk. For the holes, uh, I've measured it and the distance between each of the holes is more or less uh, 2.6. The important thing when making the holes that you can see now, I hope that the image is clear enough, that it, they're actually in line, all of them, even if they're sort of uh, going to the sides, if you look, you know, on the front of the shoe, the all of the holes are aligned so that when you make the holes make sure you're not going up or down uh, but actually that you make uh, the holes in line with where the shoes are You can see here that they actually look, I hope that image is clear, that they look in line and that the angle is kept. Actually we're gonna do uh, four new holes to replace the cage, so this is the first two. You can see same thing on the other side.
Okay. So as you can see, the, the holes are very much in line with the original holes in terms of distance and uh, angle. Same here on the other side, as you can see. So now I'm going to make a small pause because we need to warm the soldering iron for 10 minutes uh, and then we go back to make the, the holes. Now that the soldering iron is uh, hot enough, when you're making the holes, just make sure you don't move the soldering around because the holes might get too big. So just make sure you see that the edge here is slightly darker than the rest because that's how far I went um, into the prime knit. Here we go. So I don't know if you can see, there is a bit of um, excess uh, like m molten rubber from the prime knit. And basically to get rid of it, take your, your rope laces and just go through each of those holes from outside inwards like this. It also helps you make sure that the holes are good enough for the shoe. If they're too big, of course, you can take the scissors and just cut those bits off. Now, I hope you bought uh, rope laces. Those are 110 centimeters. I'm putting the link as well. Just uh, put it on the shoes the way you like it.
there you go a much cooler version of the original tubular X uh, I'm still figuring out what to do with this uh, bit so it doesn't look flabby I mean when you're wearing it, it's kind of hard to see uh, on the other side that I had done before I tried the uh, super glue super bonder here but you see it didn't hold up so I'm gonna try uh, some shoe glue uh, but even without the glue uh, it's not a an issue and it doesn't look any worse so hey YouTube thank you so much for watching I hope you liked the video if you did leave a like and if you can send me a picture of your new customized tubular racks have a good time